This time on Road and Race, we find out which is best, the Porsche Boxster S or the Ford Fiesta ST. So good morning everyone. Today we're trying something a little bit different on the channel. Um, I am driving out with my friend Gary and he has a Fiesta ST. So what we're doing today is going out and doing a series of challenges to see which car's best. First up, we have my Porsche Boxster S 986, finished in lapis blue. This 15 year old car has a flat six, 3.2 litre engine, which from the factory produced 252 brake horsepower and 226 foot pounds of torque. This gives a 0 to 60 time of 6.5 seconds. There's 17 inch alloy wheels fitted with Michelin Pilot Sport 2 tires, 22545 on the front and 25540 on the rear. Drilled brake discs with Brembo four piston calipers front and back. Over a standard Boxster S, I've fitted a few simple upgrades such as GT3 brake ducts, BBC Blue Stuff track pads, and to save weight, no spare tire or CD changer. Next up, we have the Ford Fiesta ST2 MP215, finished in spirit blue. This three-year-old car has a four-cylinder, 1.6-litre turbocharged engine, which produces 179 brake horsepower and 214 foot-pounds of torque, but can produce 197 brake horsepower for 15 seconds, which Ford called overboost. This particular Fiesta has been to mount you and had the MP215 upgraded airbox and ECU remap, so now produces 15 more brake horsepower and 22 more foot-pounds of torque. This gives an improved 0 to 60 time of 6.4 seconds. There's 17 inch alloy wheels fitted with 20540 Bridgestone Potenza R050A tyres front and rear. Over a standard Fiesta, the ST2 has upgraded side skirts, harder springs and shocks, a new rear diffuser, a rear spoiler, twin exhausts, and a more aggressive front bumper with honeycomb grille. We've selected three challenges for the cars. First up will be a test of straight line speed as we time who can get from 0 to 60 first. Next up, we will look at everyday practicality. Then the final test will be the go to woe. That's who can get to 60 miles an hour then stop in the shortest distance. But first, we test drive each other's cars to get a feel for what we're up against. Well, I think I've been a passenger in my own car. It's got a lot of torque as well, so if you're in third, if you put your foot down now, in third, you just... Yeah, you do feel it, do you? It feels quick in the passenger seat. It's, um, it's, it's very sharp, isn't it? It is sharp. It's, um, everything feels really well screwed together, everything feels tight, everything feels like a performance car. You get in some other cars like the, my dad's got a Focus, and everything's just woolly. Yeah. Isn't it? Like the steering's woolly and yeah. the pedals yeah. are woolly, but it's, it's meant to be soft so it's not tiring for long journeys and stuff like that. This is a well focused car and it, it does well fiestered car. Yeah. Very <laughs> it does focused. what it's designed to do very well. And that's go around corners fast basically. But you also, because it's a newish car as well, you get the new car feel. Yeah, it's a smaller steering wheel than I'm used to, but that's nice, it's nice and racy, it's comfortable. Um, if you want to go around these corners and keep going into the village, uh, you can do if you want. Brakes are, uh, are quite assisted, um, which again is probably nice, it's not, it's not too tiring. When you drive my car, you have to really press the brake pedal. Yeah. But it's, it's a very uh, linear brake pedal, so it's quite good for the track, so you can put 10%, 50% yeah. braking in and you, you know so where you are. You get what you put in, basically. Was you know, with this one I would probably say it's a little bit more harder to do that. Uh, I mean, your steering's electric as well. Oh, it's electric? Yeah, it's electric steering. Oh, mine's hydraulic. Yeah, this is like the modern age kind of steering. Um, I would, I don't know, it's hard to tell. It's, it's quite, a, it's firm ride. Yeah, very um, firm. I would say it's probably slightly firmer than mine, actually. Yeah. Um, Just keep going up here. But it feels good, it feels connected, it feels, 
you know, it gives you confidence. I know you're going slowly here down these kind of small roads. But... Yeah, I mean, these cars are renowned for being really firm, really hardly sprung. Um, and some people do moan about it, but I think it's a compromise that you have with yeah. the handling yeah, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It's what the car's about, isn't it? It's, if you want a car that's comfortable, you buy a Fiesta Titanium if you want a Fiesta that's comfortable to cruise around in. But I, I notice the bumps a lot more in the passenger seat at the minute. Yeah. After, when I'm talking, it's like... Uh, uh, uh. You're not expecting them. As a no. driver, you yeah. kind of see them and then you... Um, gearbox throw. Let's just try that. Um, it's quite a nice box. The, the manual I had in my Nissan 350Z was a lot chunkier. Yeah. Um, it's not the worst gearbox throw I've ever felt, though. Go, 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 go. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> Making me smile. <laughs> <laughs> so it's quiet. It's quiet. I'll just slow down slowly. I've got no hands on it. It's nervous. It's very eager though. It wants you to drive. Oh it. yeah. It wants you to go fast. And that was even more so since um, I had the remap. Yeah. Oh, it was very nice. At Five thousand. I think. Yeah, it's quick. Yeah, it's a quick car. Um, it's very nice. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be unhappy having a car like this. No, I mean, no. we'll talk about the practicality, other aspects of the car later on, but um, you know, it's a balance. Yeah, it's, it's very nice. First time in a box dress for me. behind you as well you've got the kind of exhaust note and the engine combined yeah we're gonna give it a bit of acceleration around this bend just to see how she how she goes push a little bit and you get a lot more but no that was cool no i enjoyed it yeah good experience very different <laughs> so we're going to do a 0 to 60 run yeah we're going to do a 0 to 60 run yes it's raining so that's our excuse for our pathetic 60 times <laughs> which are going to be coming up <laughs> i'm hoping i can get six and a half we'll see so we're going to try the old fashioned way with a stopwatch and looking at the dashboard. Right, so if I count you down. Okay. Well, we'll go, we'll go on three, yes? Yeah? So we'll count one, you up to three. It's like lethal weapon. One, two. Oh, we're going on three. three. We're going on three. <laughs> we'll go after on, three. On three, yeah. Okay. You ready? Right. One, on three. On three. Okay. One, two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> one, two, three. so much fun. I know it's terrible for the car, yeah. but it's just so much fun. 
doing left foot braking on this one. Left foot braking. So we're gonna have another go. Sun's out, road's dry, on three, yeah? Yeah. And I'm gonna look over here like this. One, two, three. Right, so we're in the Fiesta. Bearing in mind, our reaction times are going to be slightly different on the phones, so it's not going to be a perfectly precise timing. It's got sport mode on, so disengage traction control. I need to try and get a good launch off the line. So I think if we do two, like you did, so we do one here. So we're going to go on three, yeah? Can you see my 60 on there? Can you see 60? <laughs> yeah. I can like, yeah, I crane over here. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. I'm nervous. Are you? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, 6.71. Oh, I reckon we can get six points. We can beat 6.6 .6 if we get a better launch. <laughs> 6.71, we had a lot of wheel spinning first, didn't we? Yeah, I was, I was thrown back. We thrown back in my car. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's annoying because second doesn't quite get 60, so you've got to take it into third just to get really? 60. Really? Is the rev limit? Yeah. Really? Well, it's positive rev to? Uh, about seven. Right, so we're going to go for another another launch. Do you think I should put the traction control on? No. No. No bog there. Right, so we're going to go on three again, yeah? Yeah. One, two, three. Fastest time was 6.71, mine is 6.6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. Yeah, bang on, bang on. So, pressure's on, Gary, for a highly scientific test. I need to work out how to stop it from wheel spinning. See, I'm holding it at 2000 revs and it's still wheel spinning, so if I have higher revs, it's going to wheel spin even more, isn't it? So, maybe I need to hold it at sort of 1000 revs, just 1000 and a half. Or, or just go for broke and hold it at 6 and just. Then it'll just light the tires up. <laughs> Right, should we go? Have you decided what you're going to do then? Yeah, go on in. What are you going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to go about two and a half hours. Two and a half hours? Yeah, just drop the clutch. Okay. One, two, three. That was a good start. Okay. 6.58! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> but to be fair, I've had a lot more, I've had a lot more <laughs> goes than you. That was a better start there, wasn't it? It was a, that was a pretty good start. Yeah. So that was two and a half thousand revs, wasn't it? Yeah. Stop. Very close cars though, very close cars. We can just do this all day, <laughs> basically. Until Plus, one of us wins. Yeah. <laughs> it's lucky I've got two new tyres in the garage waiting to go on. <laughs> I think I've caned most of these. <laughs> right, so what we've got here then, Neil? So let's take a seat. We've got a little tubby hole here. Lifts up. Does that lift up? I was yeah. going to say, because that would have been a little bit silly, wouldn't it? That was impeding that. It's quite deep. It's quite deep, actually. So you can get a bottle of bottle of water in there and your wallet and stuff and your phone. <laughs> Put two here. One for your wallet and your keys. That's all right. Not bad. What's this? An ashtray. Got some neatly lined up money in there. <laughs> some pound coins. <laughs> Does that open? Is that an no, bag? it's an airbag. Passenger airbag. Uh, does this open? No, you do get a um, glove compartment in later models, but not this one. So we've got no glove box, so that's no. minus one point. <laughs> we've got in here, does that open? Yeah, push the button. Ah, we've got, oh, we've, done a, we've got a DIY drinks holder here. So Neil's used some foam there to stick some drinks bottles in. 
Does this not come with a drink? Does it no, not come? No, no, no cup holders, no. No, so no. we've got no cup holders in here. Area here. Oh, look at that. Endless. That, yeah, I've got my tyre weld in here and hat when it's sunny and digital thermometer yeah. and just gauge and... Cool. The, the option was to have some more speakers in here. You could have got... Oh, you can have those okay. um, rear-mounted speakers in there to give it... Uh, I think a total of six in the car. <laughs> so what did you do on your day off, Gary? Wow. <laughs> you see this on all car videos. It has to do be you? Oh, there we go, we're in. Yeah. Beautiful. However, I'm only like five foot <laughs> nine, five foot eight and a half. Wow, well, that's better. You'll easily fit in this <laughs> one. That is weird. I'll tell you what, though. Oh, no. No, ignore that. I was going to say you could film from here, but you can't see where you're going. <laughs> that's quite a weird feeling to be sat in the front of a, of a car. So you press this. Oh, it's already open, yeah. There so, you go. So am I getting in it, then? Yeah. Do you think you can get in that? I'm a little bit taller than you. Yeah. I think I could. Go on then, try. <laughs> this is elegant. <laughs> this is a classic test. He's yeah. in. Right, shut the door quick. <laughs> if we get really famous, this will be the clip though. <laughs> but if you got rid of this, you'd have a lot more space as well. This is quite deep. If you, if you pulled this out, you've yeah. got a good, you know, yeah, there is more room in there. Fair amount of space. I won't take it Because the exhaust apart, doesn't, the exhaust goes around that, so yeah. you haven't got the exhaust kind of getting in the way. Storage wise, okay, got the big deep uh, cubby holes in here. Um, glove box. Box in there, yeah. Which is uh, fairly okay. It's not too bad. Fits, so, fits yeah. what I need. Yeah. You carry your uh, manual around with you. Do yeah, you? carry that in there. But instant reference. Yeah, just, just in case I need to, uh, you know, look at my service schedule. <laughs> Another deep pocket down here. So how are you in the back there? I fit. Uh, it, it's a bit like being on an airplane. <laughs> uh, you'd, you'd not be comfortable on a very long journey back here. Um, headroom's really good though. It is good, isn't um, it? I've sat in uh, Mercedes and other BMWs, like the, the um, coupe versions, and your head's like yeah, like that. But this headroom-wise, it's fine. A feeling. Do, needs to go up, but. do you get any feeling of like claustrophobia or anything in the back there? Because I know it's a three-door. And obviously they can feel a bit claustrophobic, can't they? No, it's it's one of the smaller cars I've been in, but I mean it's not. And you've got you've got speakers here as well. Yeah, speakers in there. Um, no, it's a small but it's what you need, really. So you're happy with the back? You're happy with it in there? I, I never really. I probably only had about two people in the back. Oh really? Yeah, since I've had it. So I told you didn't need yeah. it. Can you put that headrest down? Because I'm a bit OCD. <laughs> For what it is, I'm gonna give it a seven that's very generous yeah. what would you give your own car though for practicality just to give a benchmark here the boot's okay i think for, for the side i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna be biased yeah well if you think <laughs> a family car is, is 10 out of 10 for practicality yeah your average yeah. family car yeah because it does everything you want it to yeah without being like a van or whatnot you know i'd probably i'd probably say seven for mine as well oh really yes I, I, I may, thought you'd say more maybe an eight probably stretch to an eight actually because i got two cup holders well and, you've got back seats which and I got, gives you an extra point and i got back easily. seats yeah yeah but i can't carry people which no, is always frustrating no. come sometimes it's not a fair challenge really but i think practicality side mine's going to win because it's a it's a it's essentially a small family hatchback yeah. isn't it whereas yours is a, a sports car What we're gonna do now, we're gonna do a naught to 60 back to naught. Um, we've got a we've got a start point marked out on the road, and then when I stop after completing it, we're gonna mark the centre of my front wheel with a marker, and then we're gonna do it in Neil's car to see if he can stop before. So basically the winner's gonna be the person that stops first. First. Yeah. Yeah. So this is timing the acceleration and the braking capabilities. So yeah, doubly nervous now. <laughs> so I don't have to be counted down, I can just go. Whenever I feel Whenever ready. Whenever feel like it, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to mark this up, mark up the spot. It's just pretty much here on this line, so let's have a look. To get in line, it's going to be 
there. Right, here we go. Nord 60 to Nord in the Porsche. Let's see if we can This is a challenge that. I really want to win because uh, <laughs> I'm losing on the other tests. And um, my car's heavier, but hopefully it's got bigger brakes. So we'll see what yeah. difference that makes. Are you ready? Yeah, older, older bigger one. brakes against modern smaller brakes. Yeah, okay, here we go. Go. This is where the Fiesta ended up. Eight to ten metres. Eight to ten metres. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Well, it's not 100% scientific, but we did our best. Can't win them all, can you? Can't win them all. <laughs> right, so following on from our day of extensive testing, high-tech, scientific, scientific testing. Yeah. We've come up with this Top Gear style uh, whiteboard here. Now we've put um, the challenges into categories. We've got practicality, cost, the running cost, the 0 to 60 to 0 challenge that we did, and then the 0 to 60 at the end. Um, other than these, there are also other areas, but they're subjective really, so we can't, re it wouldn't be fair to put them on here. We would just argue. Yeah, forever. Yeah, we never come to a solution basically. We never come to a, a winner or a, an agreement, should I say. Um, so yeah, so we've got Nils Porsche here and a Fiesta ST. So should we start with uh, practicality? Yes, yes. Yeah. So mine's obviously the most practical. <laughs> and why is that? No, I'm not joking. <laughs> yours, yours is clearly the most practical. Well, we looked, we had the footage where we looked around and I managed to get in both your boots. You did get in both my boots to start. Yes, which, um, and you got into my boot. Getting into your boot. So I think boot space, I think they're pretty equal. On yes. Boot space. Yes. Yeah, would, would you agree? Yes. Storage in the car. Mine, mine obviously won that. Yeah, big items. I can't carry big items. Yeah, you can't. You've got no back seats or. No. Yeah. Although I can carry tall items because I've got no roof. That's true. Yeah, so you can carry. So you've got a fern <laughs> or a conifer. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can get him so in the wind. Yeah. Um but no, it's just and luggage. You can't get anything big yeah. luggage wise, suitcases in the car. Which is quite a biggie really, isn't it? And you can't carry friends yeah, in the car seats. One friend. One yeah, but I only got one friend, so <laughs> it's fine. Is that me? No, you're not a friend. <laughs> So yeah, okay, well I think the Fiesta obviously obviously is better in that respect. I can carry passengers. Um, it's just more of a day-to-day -day car, yeah, isn't it? More. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. we're going to agree that the Fiesta wins that. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to put a zero on here, and I'm going to put a one on there. Right, cost. I think you mentioned it earlier, yours was? Mine was about 16,400, uh, six months old as an ex-demonstrator, with 6,000 miles on the clock. Yeah, and mine was 7,000 pounds. Second hand. Yeah, second hand. Yeah. So it's fifteen years old. Fifteen years old. So it's not it's not too bad. That's not too bad really, is it? As a residual wise, that's it's held its value, kind of. Has it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just normal depreciation, that's yeah, what I suppose. Pay. I suppose. It's hard to compare this one, isn't it? Because obviously a bottom well, is nearly new. Well mine's if you want to buy it now, if you want to buy your fiesta now, how much would it cost? About ten and a half. Ten and a half. Yeah. yeah. So you get my car for three Turn off grown cheaper. Yeah. So I think I win cost. Mm -hmm. I'm cost to buy. If someone wants yeah. to go out and buy a car, it is cheaper at the end of the day. Yeah. So there's a zero there. Running costs. Well, I think it's, uh, well, I think I'm going to win this, but. <laughs> well, there's two, two types there's servicing, and then there's like fuel, tyres, consumables. Shall we do it if we were going to take it to a garage? Or okay. To get it serviced, because I could I could get the parts online and service it myself so if I could be. But well, even then they'd be cheaper than mine. Yeah. They? Yeah. Ford parts are quite cheap. Mm. Porsche parts are going to be more expensive, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. How much are you looking for a service kit? How much are you looking at for a service kit? I think it's about two fifty. I think roughly. Is that with plugs as well? That would just be oil change. Oh, yeah. That's, that's just oil change. Yeah. Mine's mine's definitely cheaper than that. Um, MPG. Uh, 30, uh, 16 in town, 30 on the motorway. Okay, yeah, mine's yeah, mine's average about 
34 normal driving. Spirited driving goes down to about 30. So what's that entail? <sighs> I have no idea. You know, yeah, okay. No, ba- basically I've, when I've reset the trip and left it for a good few months, it hasn't been below 30 um, as an average. So yeah, plus it's a mod- more modern turbo engine, so I suppose it's going to be a bit more. I'd expect it to be yeah. more economical. So we're going to give that one to the Fiesta? Yes. So how shall I do this? Two lines or just a two? I'm going to do a two, that's the total, isn't it? Okay. And you've still got one there. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Nor to 60. And then to zero. Yeah, to zero. So wow. The, the, the acceleration and braking challenge. Yeah. And that one was, unfortunately, <laughs> that's good. Well, the footage shows, <laughs> shows what the result was in that one. The orange drink uh, holder does not lie. That's two apiece. But why do you think my one won there? I don't know. I think... I mean, if it was all done... If it was all done accurately with, you know, precision timing and you might have a better idea, but I think if we did say yours did obviously win, it must be because of the brakes. Maybe because of your bigger brakes or... Because we would have got to 60 about the same... Yeah, it's going to be a similar time, time to sit because I've got quite a good launch um, on that occasion. So it must have, it's got to be the bigger discs. Yeah, I've got slightly wider tyres, I've got way more grip. Yeah. So bigger tyres, bigger brakes, but again, a bit more weight, but I suppose that just compensated for it. Yeah, but it's a good, probably about eight, nine metres, wasn't it? What about driver skill? Are we gonna, well, I don't know, know about that, uh, reaction times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a clear, you, you clearly won that one. So yeah. I'll give you that. A 0 to 60. Now. So our scientific, Timing. Now I got six point. What was it? Six point five eight. Do you want me to look at my phone? Yeah. Like yeah. You got six point six. Bang on. Six point five eight. You're right. Six point five. Six point five eight. Which but is two hundredths of a second. Yeah. yeah. Which but is nothing. The results were pretty. They weren't the most effective. No, it was like, generally you just go show that our cars are very similarly matched, isn't it? I mean, so I, I think we should have it. There's a draw. There's a draw on that. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah. So that's three points each. Three points each. So that's a tie. So what does this mean, Gary? What does this mean? Well, this means <laughs> you've not proved anything. If you had a, if your car was a Renault Clio Sport, then it would be, you know, then we could actually probably, it'd be fair, wouldn't it? A fair kind of comparison. So they're two different. Yeah. They're just two completely different cars, aren't they? Um, but I think it's been good to put them up against each other. And it's quite a bit of performance as well. Like it's quite surprising that they're very similar performance. I suppose it boils down to just what you want from a car, really. Yeah. Um, I'd say mine's a bit more kind of track focused, yeah. more kind of performance focused. It's that one specific area, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's just a bit more of a all rounder. Yeah. It's more. I'd say mine's a car that if you do want to go shopping. Or if you do want it, if you do have children and you want to put a child seat in the back and you want to drive, you know, sensibly and casually, you can do. But then if you want to turf the kids out and turf the wife out on a Sunday and you want to hit back roads, and you, you, you can. Mm. It's a fun car to drive. Um, so yeah, mine's kind of a bit the best of both worlds, whereas yours is mainly focused on putting the roof down out on a Sunday and you've got the power there and, and the handling if you need it. If you want, yeah, if you want yeah, to push it. Yeah. 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 So I think each and their, I think they're both great cars in their own right. Mm. And they're equally. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. So that's it. That's it. You happy with that? Yes. Yeah. Job done. Cheers. <laughs> Next time on Road and Race, a two-part episode on suspension. In part one, we show you how to place your anti-roll bar bushes, and in part two, we find out if spending the extra money on harder polyurethane bushes is worth the money day to day, and if they improve handling on the track. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit the like button as it really helps us make more shows. Click the suggested box at the top of the screen now to watch the next video in this series. Please feel free to get in touch by leaving a comment on this video and you can keep up to date with us via our website, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Thanks for watching.